Hi guys, CG Crafted here. Today we will be taking a look at uh, my ultimate wall shader and I will try to create a quick tutorial on how to use it. And this is for beginners, so if you are using this for the first time, you should be having no problems uh, after this video. Okay, so first uh, we will create a lake scene, a very simple one, and we will animate it. So how to start? Uh, first you need a Blender file. I eliminated the default cube already with all the default nonsense that's uh, in Blender. And we will need a second Blender file open, which is the ultimate water shader. Uh, you can uh, uh, also append it or you can also work in the original Ultimate Water Shader file because I already pre-configured everything for you, but for this episode I will be configuring everything myself so you will see what uh, happens and how to use things. And you will see how to configure your scene yourself too, if you want to copy and paste the water shader. I will just quickly uh, copy and paste this to our new scene and I will change to uh, water performance shader because uh, uh, this uh, water plane comes with two different shaders and the performance one is for Eevee. Uh, and for me Eevee is really not working perfectly for some reason, so as you can see it's taking ages to load even the uh, performance shader. Uh, I believe this is a problem with my PC so this should uh, work for you quite nicely. And you will see at the end of the video that uh, Cycus has uh, no problem loading the, the shader. And for now uh, we will uh, search for a backdrop uh, image. I will use the Blender Kit add-on which uh, comes with Blender by default, so all you need to do is come here and enable it. And when we are done with this, you should see this uh, tab appearing right here. You will also need to register, but you have a lot of free things on it, so this is not exclusively paid thing. And I would also advise you to change the mode to append, not link, because we will have more control later over our objects if we append and not link them. Um, and uh, up here you can search for backdrop. Uh, what I will use is uh, probably in the subscription version, but all these nice uh, green grass uh, trees, uh, backdrops, uh, I, if I remember correctly they are uh, free. But uh, if you have trouble with this you can also just go to cc0textures.com uh, and, uh, and download backdrops from there too, it's completely free and you don't need to register. Okay, so we will uh, download this backdrop and it looks fancy as it loads. And when we are done then we can just uh, uh, push this uh, out of our way, way back to the end of this uh, lake plane. And we will need a new camera since I eliminated the default one by default. And for this we can use this uh, nice little shortcut to bring the camera to the viewport. I also use a custom shortcut for this uh, fly navigation mode which you can uh, access from here by the way or you can just uh, use the default controls for the camera. And uh, I, I think this uh, mountain uh, looks a bit stretched vertically, so I will push this down a bit and I will try to unstretch it myself. Okay, uh, I will try to do it so the edges won't be visible because they will be outside from the camera's view. And uh, for the animation part we are practically done since the uh, ultimate uh, water shader comes with uh, default animations and since we don't need anything fancy for this uh, little animation, I won't change anything. The water flows uh, in the direction of the camera at this point, but you can uh, rotate the whole plane and then it will be uh, okay. For the HDRI, I will use the Easy HDRI add-on, which is uh, free by the way too, and you have to download it. You can just add new HDRI on this world tab. And when the HDRI loads in, we'll see that uh, the HDRI completely doesn't match the scene's lighting and the backdrop's lighting. So for that, we will have to uh, find a good HDRI that uh, 
matches the lighting and it uh, also depends on your scene if you use the forest or something uh, else or maybe a google image uh, for this backdrop then you might need a default uh, lighting but uh, what i'm trying to do is create a lighting that matches this uh, bluish uh, foggy uh, outline of the mountain uh, I will search for a cloudy, darker uh, HDRI that will match this. And this will also create a great uh, um, effect on the water that's uh, also matching the scene. Okay, I uh, rotated the HDRI and the weird uh, trees that were sticking out are gone. So I will go to the shading tab and uh, uh, select the ultimate water shader plane and uh, we can start uh, configuring this. In fact I will be using cycles now and I will change back to the default water which will destroy EV if we try to load it. And uh, as you can see cycles has uh, no problem quickly loading in the shader so it's just EV it has limitations on on how it can manage uh, nodes. I think it's a quite uh, Oh, heavy no tree for it, but anyway, uh, what's happening here is we have the ultimate water shader. We can also uh, configure all these settings on the right side, uh, but I just prefer the notes, especially because we don't need a big viewport because my PC couldn't really handle rendering it all the time. So we have the different type of waters here, which we can mix to create uh, new types of water. Uh, preferably we will be using some kind of lake which is uh, on by default but I will want to mix in a little ocean so it will be uh, more unique and match the scene better it will give nice reflections because the lake is quite uh, dirty water it doesn't really have re uh, reflections and uh, as you can see there's the lake transparency uh, settings that we can also easily change just slide the slider and uh, that's it for this because we don't have uh, a detailed bottom in fact we don't have any bottom part of the lake that um, that we are uh, supposed to use we i will just uh, turn off the lake transparency for now if we don't do this uh, we might also see the bottom uh, edge of the backdrop which doesn't look too promising at least not for me Okay, for the water, if we change the surface, it won't really work because we turned off uh, lake transparency. And since the lake surface and lake depth uh, control the transparent part of the shader, this won't really change anything. We will need to use the uh, lake uh, fake surface and fake depth to change uh, the color. And I want to make it uh, more blue because that will match the lighting and the blue fog in the background. And uh, as you can see, it's already changing, it works perfectly. We don't want to overdo it because it will create a very well interesting effect with uh, interesting uh, color for the water. And now I will turn off the transparency for the ocean too, of course, for the same reason I mentioned before. And uh, you can change the ocean color, but it's not really uh, needed. You can see the reflections appeared, so it's working uh, perfectly. And uh, that's it. All we need to do is now is to come over here and uh, go into the scene settings, I think that's the top's name, and uh, change to experimental. Then go back to the material tab and search for the settings uh, tab, which is here. And what we need to do is change the, the displacement type to displacement only. And what's happening now is if we go into edit mode with tab and uh, start to subdivide the pane and then go back to the modifiers tab here and add the subdivision modifier and turn on adaptive, which is a new menu thanks to us enabling the experimental settings, then uh, the waves will turn 3D. And here with the displacement uh, scale, we can set up the scale of the waves. If we are not uh, satisfied with the result, uh, it looks a little bit spiky, then we can add more subdivisions and that should work. As you can see, the 
we've took a uh, higher uh, quality now because we have both subdivision on it. But uh, I think that this, we don't need uh, so high waves, this is ridiculous, so I will tone it down uh, to uh, smaller uh, waves, we can even tone it down more, and then we will uh, see a more uh, soft, less windy uh, wave, uh, which uh, isn't really visible, but I want it to be visible, because uh, <laughs> if we turn this all the way down, then at this point we could just add some kind of mirror reflection uh, material, and uh, we wouldn't really need the uh, ultimate water shader. So here we go, this looks a little better. Uh, a lot more details on the waves, it looks quite realistic, I think, and for uh, this we are finished. Uh, for the animation you don't really need to do anything, uh, limit the end keyframes so it won't render the default 250 uh, frames, and then, and then come over here to render, render, render animation, and we are done. You will have 3D waves, and basically this is it. So this was a little beginner tutorial, if you're new to the ultimate uh, water shader, this uh, example scene might be useful for you to know how to uh, set it up and, and how to use the ultimate water shader. Hopefully you like this, uh, I will be creating a more advanced uh, ultimate uh, water shader videos. Uh, some of them will be uh, also useful for people who just want to create a uh, water scenes without my uh, shader, so if you have a custom shader maybe with a custom animation on it, then we, I'm planning to create a video where you might be seeing tips that will be useful for your scene too. For example, I'm uh, planning to create a river, and uh, with the ultimate water shader it's possible, and I'm uh, excited to try this out, I haven't done it myself, but in the uh, theory it should be working. So. I will see what can I do about it, and if it's working, then I will upload the video, and you will be able to see it, and uh, probably do it even if you are not using the ultimate water shader. If you like this video, that's good. If you turn on notifications by clicking on the bell, that's good. If you donate me on Blender Market, CG Trader, or anywhere else I'm currently available, that's also good. If you say bye, that's super good, because bye.